Welcome to the MCC Blue River Geology Field Study trip to Northwest Wyoming. Our journey begins right here at MCC Blue River. With everyone accounted for, we loaded the van and headed west in search of geological wonders. After crossing the great state of Nebraska, we came to our first stop, Kurt Gowdy State Park in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Here the students received their first lesson from Instructor Wolf. The next morning we headed north to the Bighorn National Forest just outside the Bighorn Basin. Our first stop, Shell Falls. Here is where the students begin to study the stratigraphy of the rocks around them. Starting with Precambrian granite or basement rock, the students also observed Cambrian flathead sandstone as well as Grovant shale, which with a little digging revealed fossilized worm burrows. Just a short hike from Shell Falls, the monocline overlook gave students a first-hand look at Ordovician bighorn dolomite, as well as Mississippian Madison limestone. Our next stop on the stratigraphy column was the Jurassic Sundance Formation, which landed us in the heart of the Bighorn Basin at the Red Gulch Dinosaur Track site. Students literally walked where dinosaurs walked, following tracks of dinosaur footprints and collecting fossilized shells of Gryphea. The next morning, students woke to a hearty breakfast at Shell Campground. Eat up, proclaimed Dr. Martin, as there is no food in the kitchen we're going to. Well, there is, but... Devil's Kitchen! After a lecture from Dr. Martin on evolution, the students declined into the Cretaceous Cloverleaf Formation. To find gastroliths or dinosaur gizzards, and to study the Badland topography. Skirting Devil's Kitchen is the Thermopolis Formation, where students search through Thermopolis shale to find dolites. On top of the Thermopolis is our friend the Maori, where the shale gave way to fossilized fish scales. Our next stop covered from the Permian Ten Sleep to the Triassic Chugwater, back through the Sundance up to the Cretaceous Cloverleaf. Better known as Sheep Mountain Anticline, it was all uphill. With belemnite fossils aplenty, a lecture on the geology of folds, and a quick lab on strike and dip. The climb was well worth it, especially if you needed cell phone coverage. Coyote Basin offered up some quaternary glacial deposits. While further into the basin, we started to encounter Mississippian Madison limestone that contained stromatolites. Students also explored the Jurassic Morrison Formation, finding numerous dinosaur bone fossils and petrified wood. Later that day, we found ourselves in the Eocene Willwood Formation some 130 million years later in time, an era when mammals were the dominant life form, and our own student Phil Diaz found proof. Uncovering the femur of a primitive tapir. A fantastic find to top off a fantastic day. The next day we said goodbye to Dan at Shell Campgrounds and hit the road towards Cody. Down the road, students witnessed Precambrian granite in contact with Cambrian Flathead Sandstone. Known as a great unconformity, as two billion years of time are missing from the rock. No, that wasn't Buffalo Bill, but the next stop was Buffalo Bill Reservoir. Here, Instructor Wolf lectured on the Heart Mountain Detachment Fault, an interesting conundrum where 350 million year old rock is on top of 50 million year old rock. He also discussed the Absarica Volcanics, the first round of volcanism affecting the area. And with that, we entered into Yellowstone. There was much to write home about. First off, there was snow, which made learning at the Lake Butte Overlook a little chilly. But the students warmed up to Yellowstone's hot spots. Hearing about Yellowstone's caldera formation formed by supervolcano eruptions, 
the Lava Creek eruption being the most recent at 680,000 years ago. Buffalo! Down at the Lower Falls, also called the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, Instructor Wolf had a guest speaker that taught the students about the Rhyolite lava flow and the Yellowstone River. Where to go now? Buffalo! Actually, we set up camp and learned you can cook over an open fire, even if it's snowing. Morning came and the coffee percolated, just like the mud pots at Mud Volcano. Here the students learned the difference between mud pots and hot springs, and witnessed evidence of volcanism and hot spot activity. Bear! Mammoth Hot Springs was our next stop. Instructor Wolf spoke about the formation of the spring through travertine deposits, while Dr. Martin discussed the bacteria within the water known as thermophiles. While it wasn't sheep, we did eat lunch at Sheep Eater Cliff, followed by a discussion on the cliff's basalt lava flows and columnar jointing. Then we stopped off at the paint pots to show the comparison to the mud volcano. There she blows! Old Faithful is probably the best known attraction at the park, but there are some more impressive geysers if you know where to look. Back at camp, what would pork tenderloin be without snow? The fire kept the students warm, and the next morning we left Yellowstone with a smile. Buffalo! Then it was off to the Tetons, where we saw hawks, antelope, moose, and the Grovant Slide, an area where 10 sleep sandstones slid on Cambrian shales. The students learned how this was one of the biggest rock slides in history. With one last stop on top of Signal Mountain, students learned about the glacial history of Yellowstone and the Tetons, and how the moraines and kettles were formed as glaciers moved through. With that, we left the Tetons and headed for home. All who went, faculty and students alike, we're all in agreement once home. Geology rocks.